Please take a seat. I am trying to bring a sense of urgency here while staying very calm. Don't make me lose my cool. We are already 10 minutes late, guys, so please take a seat. Thank you so much. Take a seat and please be quiet. Thank you very much. We are about to start. So we have prepared a video and just have a closer look and let's see if you agree with that. Uh, we're going to present now, okay? Hey. 
If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut, and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd, and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers, because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point, and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in-crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, Remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over-glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. All right. I think we can take out some important lessons from this video for today's uh, sessions. So I really like this video because it acknowledges le leadership. And we don't have to be, don't be scared to be that spark to inspire change, as ridiculous as it might look. For this option, it could be someone dancing shirtless, but for today, maybe it's starting a discussion, sharing your opinion, um, giving someone else a contribution to their own opinion. So don't be scared to be that spark because that spark inspires someone else's fire. Um, the second, be open to change and have the courage to recognize others' good ideas and join them. If you find someone in today's activities that you can join and maybe contribute to, to them ideas to have it bigger and have bigger contributions, then why not? And finally, it's never too late to join the party. Like, I mean, you could have joined it in the second time, but it's never too late. So today, let's have some fun. But also remember that if you didn't join in the beginning, there's always, it's never too late to join the discussions or the work done. So let's have this video in, in our minds. It could be either this shirtless guy dancing or someone else today giving their opinion. So let's just be respectful and join the party and have fun, all right? I shall be the first follower of what he just said. Be the others. Thank you very much, Luis. We have two special people that arrived last night that I would like to acknowledge here. Our Secretary General, Ahmad Alendawi, which I want to thank for coming with and being here with us. And the Regional Director of the Eurasian Region, Yuri Emilian. Thank you so much for being here with us. Merci beaucoup. I would like 
to remind you all of the importance of the international teams. Some of you had the pleasure or displeasure of hearing me talk about it during the international team building. But as we did not um, get to see all the teams, I just would like to emphasize again that international teams are a unique opportunity to engage and connect with people all around the world that you would not necessarily have the opportunity or the courage to approach in another context. This is a fairly unique feature of the forum as opposed to the conference that enables us to get this feeling of being one big happy family. It is extremely important that you do not underestimate how much that can contribute to your experience in this forum. So please make sure to stay with your international teams in the dedicated sessions and make the most out of it. Thank you. Also, it's important to emphasize again something I said yesterday, but to put it in a scout context. Uh, some of you will have already heard about the safe from harm policy, which aims to ensure that nobody gets hurt while doing scouting. And I once again emphasize not because of any bad behaviors we have witnessed. I want to make that clear, but just for your awareness that we expect responsible behaviors and we will give you that as well. This is a commitment I make as part of this very important aspect of our work to keep everyone safe from harm. I would also like to let you know that we will have an interactive panel discussion today after this morning coffee break. Please, it will be about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015. Try and already think about questions you might have for our panelists. They will be eager to engage with you and the more you can think ahead and prepare questions, the better the discussions and learning for everyone. Something also very special today. We briefly mentioned it yesterday, but I'm very happy to say that we have a new website, a new scout.org. It looks super cool if you ask me, and we are very, very excited to, to share it with you currently on the screens. Please find the time to go, see what's different, see what's interesting for you out there, and share it as much as you can with friends. We're all over the world. Here we go. And I would like to thank the hard work of the communication team that have been working for a very long time to, to, to make this, this change happen. This is our new in online window, and we can be very proud of it. Now, time for the morning announcements. And I would like to invite Doina and Nargis to the stage to make the announcements for the day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Chairperson, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yeah. Wonderful. It's going to be a very interesting day, so now here go the serious announcements. For all tellers, please be ready for a briefing session in voting when we break out for groups in the first session. For all delegates, please make sure you bring your QR card and voting kit. There's going to be no voting without them, obviously. Uh, a multi-faith prayer room is located at the Ice Hotel, second floor, entrance of the terrace. Today, at 6.30 p.m. or 18.30, is the deadline for signing up for a break-up session. Uh, the, sign the signing up sheets are outside the plenary. Probably when you entered this morning, you could have seen them right there. So uh, we just want to remind you that we only have 20 spa spaces per session. 
So hurry up to sign up and choose your own session. And le last, but no least important, a kind reminder that the session evaluation is ready in the app. And please do the evaluation at the end of each session. Thank you very much. Good morning. So we're just going to have a couple of announcements from host team, not related to the program, but mostly just to administrative matters. So first of all, kind reminder for those who didn't give us your passwords required to register you as migration, please submit it in a fire building to the help desk so we can register you as required. Second one, I know there was some confusion yesterday regarding working hours of swimming pools and spa area. Uh, just to note that indoor pool is open until half past 11, so you have pretty much time after we finish this program to go and enjoy the rest of your evening, while outdoor pools close at nine. Uh, for the lunch, uh, we have seen there have been like a line during waiting for the food. But just if you will, can divide in two or three lines, because actually there's a several stirrels of food with the same selection, and this will shorten the lines. Um, and for tonight, we're going to have Azerbaijani fire evening. It's, it will be in amphitheater, so we're not going to be again here in the plenary, but rather sitting outside. It will be at 8.30 near the spa area. If you don't know where is it, you can ask one of our guys, and of course we'll be guiding you from here to the amphitheater. So looking forward to see you later today. Thank you, Doina. Thank you, Nargis. So yeah, just to make it really clear, uh, if you see in the, in the restaurants, you can start all the way from the left, all the way from the right. So it's been designed for that. And in case you still feel there's a big queue, we usually have an hour and a half, depending on how late we run. So you can just take a seat, have a juice, wait five minutes, and then go in the queue. And I'm sure if we all do that, this will be an amazing experience. All right, well, that's it for this uh, morning announcements. So now time for our next session, the first of the day. Why and what is active citizenship? Youth involvement in the present and future. I would like to invite Diana to come and lead this next session. And I count on all of you to be attentive. I'd like to remind you this is the main theme of our forum. So pay attention. It will be full of great surprises, I have no doubt. Thank you, Jeremy. So, hello, how are you? Hola, todo bien? Can I speak in Spanish? It's okay for you? Yeah? yeah? Okay. I will try to do my best in English. So, this is one of mo the most important sessions in, I mean, not the most important session, but the topic that we are going to talk about and we are going to reflect about is the main topic of this forum. So I will invite you to just take the responsibility to reflect on this, have good discussions, and let's rock this forum. So why and what active citizenships? And youth involvement in the present and the future of the Watson structure. These are two different topics, but at what point they are related? Uh, sometimes before, when we start to think about how to present these two topics, we decided to do it together. Because we have a very nice policy adopted in 2014 in Slovenia. You know which policy I'm talking about? Yes or no? Ah, okay. I'm talking about the youth involvement policy that we adopted the last conference. Um, how they are related, these two main topics. I will show you in this short video about the policy, and then we continue the conversations.
I will show you in the video now. It's hot here, right? Yeah. I can't start thinking, but I think it's not a good idea. In 2014, the World Scout Conference held in Slovenia had adopted the current World Scout Youth Involvement Policy which provides directions within the Scout movement on how to strengthen and ensure youth involvement at all levels. And now, we would like to take you on a quick journey through it. The basic principle that this policy is based on states that Scouting is a movement of young people supported by adults. It is not a movement for young people managed by adults only. Thus, scouting offers the potential for a learning community of young people and adults working together in a partnership of enthusiasm and experience. This basic principle is a life concept for youth involvement in scouting. Before explaining more, we should know what we mean by youth involvement. It is the process of enabling young people to actively share responsibilities with adults that affect their lives and the lives of others in their communities. The policy also includes more definitions that help you understand the big picture. But why youth involvement? Simply because young people think outside of the box. Youth have the right to be represented. The collaboration between young people and adults can develop relevant skills and positive attitudes. It fosters responsibility and sustainability with communities and institutions. And above all, it is part of the Scout method. And now, how to involve young people. The policy identified the ways at three levels. The unit level, where the grassroots education in the scout unit by the scout method starts through the team system and leadership experience. The institutional level, where involving young people in decision-making processes happens within all structures at local, national, regional and world level within the scout movement. The community level, where young people effectively contribute to resolving the challenges facing their communities as active citizens creating a positive change. Finally, the policy gives examples of what kind of challenges youth involvement faces, such as mismanagement, inappropriate tools, lack of training, etc. And it provides, in its annexes, some institutional information and scientific theories that help with understanding more about the concept of youth involvement. This was just a summary of the key points to inspire you to read it. If you want to learn more about the history, the concepts, the time frame, how to implement and much more, please visit www.scout.org slash youth involvement. So, in, in the presentation of the policy, we saw that the youth involvement concept is related to three different levels. The unit level, the community level, and the institutional level. So these two main topics, why and what are these citizenships, is for sure related to the community level. And the youth involvement in the present and the future of the Watson structure, it's more related to the institutional level. So let's start talking about the community level. What does it mean to be an active citizen? Well, I have been researching in, with my computer about the definition of what means to be an active citizen. Um, 
At the first time, Google, it's the best one of always, say that an active citizen is someone who takes a role in the community. Apart from that, uh, in our youth program policy, we have a definition about what WASM means at the, uh, an active citizen. And it says that an active citizen should be autonomous, supportive, responsible, committed, and cultural sensitive. So it's very nice how these two definitions sounds. But when we start to think about examples, activities, or how, where do, do we see this, this kind of active citizens, we start thinking about different examples. So what does that mean related to actions? Now let me give you an example. Do you know this picture? I think Jeremy and Joao mentioned it the day before. She's Lucy mm -hmm, Milslikova. She's Lucy Milsikova. And this picture has been around the social media and the most important international media in May this year. In case you don't know her yet, she's from the Czech Republic. And this picture, in this picture, she's standing up against a far-right neo-Nazi demonstration in Czech Republic. In an interview that someone from the BBC media did to her uh, some months ago, she says strongly, I went to the counter demonstration at someone who was determined to change things. To me, it makes sense to try and change the world around me. She also mentioned that I wasn't afraid, and I think young people should get involved in such things they should be aware of what's going on. So what is so unique about you, Lucy? Because Lucy is a female. Lucy is 16 years old. Lucy is from Czech Republic. Lucy is a scout. And Lucy is an active citizen. So we can say that Lucy is not different from any one of us but her experience is only a, a great reflection on what we can achieve as active citizens in our communities. She has a commitment, a responsibility with her community, with others. She was not agreed with something and she just stand up in front of it. In this way, she's creating a better world according to her values, according to Scout values. Now, I want to welcome Lucy to the stage. Thank you, Diana. Salam. Salam. Hi, I'm Lucy and I'm 16. <laughs> Maybe you will not believe me, but saying hello my age was often very unpleasant for me. Behind that number, many prejudices for people were hidden and they treated me according to that. My interest in communities and their issues began when I was about 13 years old. At that time, the refugees crisis in European countries was more of an issue than ever before. When I spoke on this, I was slaughtered by my teachers, neighbors, friends, and even family members. When a 13 years old <laughs> speaks about something that a lot of politicians, experts, and journalists deal with, and she tells you that your opinion are inhuman, the easiest way is love to her. Although this happened some time ago, I am still experiencing this because of my age. I think many people may experience this. 
and maybe. We have similar prejudices too. Whatever young or old, it is important to realize that intergeneration cooperation is very important and offers many opportunities and benefits. World Scouting is aware of such opportunities and benefits, and that is why we are here today. Scouting is a worldwide movement that crosses all borders. From the foundation of the Scout movement, millions of Scouts have grown up in the hands of experienced Scout leaders. The fact that we are here is a proof that our leaders did a great job. They have aroused our interest and we must also try to raise the next generation's interest. An interest in what? In society, in where and how we live. An interest in changing things. Interest to be heard. Today, I'm part of several groups and projects and I'm very fond of regularly working together with both of older and young people. Thanks to that, I have found out how great it's work with people of different ages and with different experience. The more we are different, the more diverse and different views we have, the greater range of ideas, opinions, and solutions we can find. Talking to each other means a step forward if we are open and ready to listen. Sometimes it is difficult. I often experience the fact that young people are afraid to challenge the more experience. It is how many societies said. You may have heard the sentence, I can because I'm your mother, or when you are in my position, we will be able to speak together. Respect should be mutual. I think that the child can really respect the teacher only if he knows that the teacher respect him, and vice versa. And this should be at work, at school, at home, or in a scout group meeting. Successful cooperation and building of strong relationship are possible only in case of mutual respect. This year, I have participated in an executive program focused on politics and active citizenship. There was a wide age ranger participant, and the level of knowledge required was not too demanding. So that's why very different people of different ages and with different level of knowledge came for the program. During the training, several of the participants mentioned that they had not learned anything new and had not seen any benefits from the program. However, when the program was over, we all agreed that the best thing about this was that we are all interested in the topics, but in the different ways. So we could learn and be inspired by each other. That was great. One of the many amazing things about scouting is that it's not limited by age. And that exactly what we should benefit from. It is an environment where different but there's still similar people of all ages meet. So do not be afraid to involve young people in scouting's governance and its decision-making process. But also, do not be afraid to engage older scout alumni and involve them directly in scouting programs and make a contribution. Intergeneration cooperation is something we should focus on continue to move forward. That's what I believe we should try to do. Let's benefit our Let's benefit from our differences as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy. <laughs> Just a smile. Okay. Uh, now we are going to open the floor to question and answers, but first I want to invite Anna from Czech Republic as well to help with the translation because Lucy feel more comfortable answering in Czech. 
Good. So if you have any questions, just bend your heart. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Dana? Wait for the mic, please. Yeah, I'm Timothy Sam from Ghana, the Africa region. Um, I would like to ask Lucy, what motivated you to take that step? Like a young girl at your age, being able to stand in front of maybe um, public security and uh, maybe national service or something like that, to be able to have that confidence to, to operate them in that manner. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm. Yes, I think that to, co mě motivovalo nejvíc, je asi uh, to, co jsem viděla v mém okolí, hlavně asi ve scoutu. I think that the thing that motivated me the most is what I had seen in my, uh, in my surrounding, mostly in the scouting. Protože uh, moji vedoucí, hlavně teda z klučičího oddílu, jsou docela aktivní a dělali super věci a já začala jsem si toho všímat asi kolem těch 12, 13. Because my leaders, uh, mostly from the boy scouting uh, in my group, were very active and they did a lot of things in the community and now I noticed and started, I started noticing it while, when I was around 12. Mm, a protože jsem vyrůstala jenom s mamkou, tak uh, jsem si právě všímala asi hlavně těch uh, super dospělých kluků, kteří dělají fakt super věci a byly to pro mě takový hrdinové. Um, and when I was young, I was growing up with my mother only, so I was noticing mainly uh, grow up, grown up men who were, um, who were courageous and they were like heroes for me. Um, ale to asi nebylo všechno, jenom uh, jeden z mnoha věcí. Uh, asi si myslím, že jsem se dost všímala uh, uh, už od malička toho, co se děje zkrátka a bylo mi vždycky hrozně líto, když jsem viděla někoho, kdo třeba je na ulici a říkala jsem si, proč zrovna já mám takový štěstí, že mám kde bydlet, mám co jíst a můžu mít cokoliv, co chci. I'm definitely not going to name everything that influenced me, but one of those things is that uh, even when I, I was younger, I uh, was noticing people like on the street with no food and I was wondering why am I the lucky one who has everything. Mm, a to je všechno. <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> Any other question? The, the in the back. Do have yeah. Stand up, please. Hello, Lucie. Uh, my name is David Hines from the Boy Scouts of America. And I have sort of two questions. One is, can you give us a little more detail of what happened, like what the discussions was between you and this man? And then why did you choose to wear a scout uniform rather than just being a citizen? Takže k detailům. Ono je to vtipně, protože vždycky se všichni ptají na detaily a já už říkám tolikrát, že už nevím, co bych měla říkat. It's funny because every time I'm somewhere, everyone uh, asks me about details and I'm saying them all over again and I don't know what to say anymore. Ale tak to prostě zopakuju. Bavili jsme se hlavně teda, jak už jsem zmiňovala, to, co mě nejvíc ovlivnilo v těch 13 nebo co bylo kolem mě, tak ta uprchlická krize. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just repeat it. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when I was younger, um, 
the main thing that influenced me was the uh, crisis, migrant crisis in Europe. No, a uh, on mi prostě říkal, že že si neuvědomuje, když to řeknu hezky, že si neuvědomuje určitý, určitý rizika a, a, že, a že je mu jako kdyby jedno, že já se nebojím, ale že on se bojí a že tady všichni znásilní a že znásilní i mě a pak se o tom můžeme třeba popovídat. Um, that guy on the picture, he told me, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to say it in a pleasant way, Uh, he told me that he doesn't care that I'm not afraid because he is afraid and that he thinks that uh, they will come and they, they are going to rape everybody and they are going to rape me and yeah, that's just going to be awful. A tak jsem mu řekla, že nevidím žádný rozdíl od, odkud kdo je, že je to úplně jedno, že jsme všichni stejní a že bychom měli udělat všechno pro to, abychom uh, zachránili lidský život. Tak. So I told him that I don't care about the uh, about where are people from, that I do care that we are all human and we should care about each other and we should save each other's lives. A Ohledně skautské uniformy. About the uniform. Um, jak už jsem říkala, že jsem se nejvíc inspirovala uh, od kluků a od, od pár jako starších skautů, tak uh, v Brně je spousta skautů, kteří jsou aktivní a se kterými pracuju třeba uh, 